stop hitting the stools while I'm in my groove. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let me introduce you to D. Spider Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. there we go. Can you hear me good? Yeah. All right, word, word. Great. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, you sound fine. So, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> originally, when I first started doing these, I was using just the mic off the screen and it was horrible. It just sounded all glitchy and all all bad and stuff. So now I'm finally using my recording software and uh, my, I mean, not my software, but my interface and my mic. So it sounds a lot clearer and crisp. Do I sound good enough? Oh, yeah. No, you no, you definitely do. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah, the phone, phone mic, or, are you using your phone? No, I'm using a computer. Oh, you are really? Wow. So, so probably mine must be just be a piece of shit then. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Just <laughs> like you, Dave, JT Dirty. Hey, <laughs> if, if it's dirt cheap, I'm down for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Goodness gracious. So, uh, <laughs> is, that your, is that your office? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is my dirt studios, aka it's just a background for off Zoom. But uh Dope. And it makes it just makes it so much easier because you know my place is probably not the best place, and I could take it out in a shed where I've been recording and all that stuff. But it's a little chilly. Um, actually, today's a nice day, but um, normal. Talking about it's fifty degrees. It's warm. It's summertime. Well, well that's what I'm saying. Today's actually a nice day, but I'm saying like the last couple times I did an uh, interview it was quite brisk out there. So I was like, yeah, right. I'll I'll keep it inside. And do the nice background like this. Not only that, you know, I got. Producer Joe back there, just hanging out in the <laughs> office. You know, he's just chilling out doing his thing. So he's doing a great job. He seems, a, he seems to be working hard. Right. <laughs> so if anyone didn't know, this is the one and only Unique Unknown, a.k.a. Nathan LaPointe. And thank you, bro, for coming on the uh, Talking Dirt with Dirt. Uh, this, is, this is uh, where we're going to give uh, you a chance to shine and kind of tell your story. Um so, story. I have no story. Oh, please. Voice like that. You got to have a story. There's, there's always a story behind a voice like that, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, come on now. So I got to say, first and foremost, how did you come up with the name Unique Unknown? Oh, goodness. Um, that's pretty much spawned out of... Um, really, I just I think the process most people go through when they're ready to choose a name, um, which is just, you know, trying to put a bunch of things together. Uh, but for me, I remember, uh, you know, when I started doing solo hip hop, I was only, I was going by Nathan LaPointe. Um, and then I remember just one day I was on the bus going to the Gorham campus or Portland campus or whatever, because I went to USM and I was just like, you know what, I want to try to come up with a name. I want to figure out something. And I had to think to myself, like, what do I, what do I believe in or what do I stand for? You know, essentially what, what is, is life? So I kind of thought of, uh, um, I don't know. I thought yeah, I'm pretty unique. I'm, I feel like I'm unique. I'm a weird person. A lot of people called me weird in high school. So I was like, you know, weird, but not the bad weird. So I was like, I'm unique and I'm unknown. And most of us are unknown. Like I thought of like, you know, somebody across the world and China or something like that. We have no idea about, you know what I mean? They're unknown right. to us or, you know, somebody even across the street who doesn't even know me or whatever. So, and then I just, that spawned the, we are all unique unknown. And I, I just, from there, I just knew right away. So. Right. I feel like, you know, for a while I thought maybe I'd just keep Nathan LaPointe, but then that just hit me one day and I was like, all right, you no, yeah. unknown. Dude, I, I gotta say I like it. It's catchy. It's definitely unique. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, I, I like it when you say we are all unique, unknown, because it makes me laugh just a little bit. Because every time what you say that, I say to myself, "I ain't no unique, unknown. I can't even sing like that. There's no way I got a voice like that." So, but it, uh, it's you know, and every yeah, every time I hear unique or unknown at this point. Or vice versa. Every time I hear, I'm like, "Oh my god, it's corny, it's corny at this point." But it's good. Yeah, no, I it's, love it. It's funny that like that song, "Wake Up." I, you know, I just it, that's catchy too with that you know, <laughs> freaking 
some sometimes I just see my buddy sitting over there and you know he might have had one too many to drink or whatever and he's starting to drift off and I'm like wake up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, on the speaker <laughs> right um but uh yeah so with that being said when did you get uh started doing hip hop um so I started doing hip hop in college with my buddies uh or uh, Alexi Saliba Shahadi you know, Shahadi the Rapper, um, Will Vile, um, just pretty much a little crew of us. We just started, we were freestyling a lot. I can't remember exactly like what the first day was I started to, because I was into theater and acting, you know, I'd listened to Eminem and Will Smith and, you know, you know, various hip hop before then, um, you know, Bone Thugs and stuff like that. Um, I like to listen to, but really I was into acting, but, uh, with it really happened with my buddies uh, there at college like it kind of just spawned out of freestyling and you know trying things out and then i i can't i, I started writing poetry I, I again i don't remember when i started exactly um but it was definitely during college and i realized when I read what I put down, it was like opening my eyes to myself. Cause I always struggled looking in the mirror. Um, like who is this person I'm adopting and stuff like that. So not knowing my father, knowing what my mother looks like, it's like, it's weird. So it was like looking at myself, um, when I started writing this poetry and then, you know, luckily I had friend, you know, friends who were really into it and we all just freestyled a lot. And, that's where it kind of spawned uh, just doing the hip hop. It was like freshman year of college with a bunch of, you know, some theater, theater buddies. And again, Shahadi, Shahadi uh, was a big factor in that too. I was going to say right before we uh, started this, I was actually uh, just kind of getting fresh, uh, freshened up with some of your work once again. And I came across uh, old friends, new friends, um, oh yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i was listening to that again because I, I i listened to it a couple times prior to but honest to god like it's been a been a minute so it kind of slipped off my radar again and uh so i just happened to go check that out again listen to that there so, are some really good uh unique unknown and chahadi were called the chain gang back then um and it was a group you know like five or six people um but it ended up just you know life happens and stuff like that and uh Really, Shahadi and I started recording a lot of um, songs together. I remember we did it uh, when I was living in Portland, a mattress on the floor kind of deal, com Apple computer, using GarageBand. We'd just record a couple tracks. Um, and uh, yeah, Will Vile was also involved in that early stuff, um, too. Just or to like all, all the chain gang stuff. If you go to SoundCloud and you search, you know, unique unknown, um, you'll find a lot of the earlier stuff we kind of recorded, which was really cool. So, cool. But wow. yeah, I didn't know that. I'll definitely have to do that. Yeah, that old old friends, new friends was when Shahadi and I actually, I believe that was when we reconnected. Um, because there was, you know just like I said, life happened for a while. So all of us kind of like spread out, you know, once I moved to Portland and stuff like that, but we reconnected um, when I was living in Brunswick and then, you know, they were there for me. He was there for me in a time of need and stuff like that. But that, that was a good, uh, yeah, that's a dope song right there. And I think it's one of my better mixed songs because I mixed all those songs too. Um, so you can see the progress from the beginning to the end, which yeah. is pretty funny. Now, um, so with that being said, um, yeah, how long roughly have you known Shahadi now? Since 2010 or 11. So Man. like I said, there was a period of, I think, you know, maybe some years of um, not really being connected in a sense. You know, not a lot. Like, we've always stayed pretty much connected throughout the year. So, yeah, I mean, since, since 2010-11. Damn. Damn. You go back. So, when did you... So, you said originally you're from Florida? Was Yes. So yep. When did you move up to Maine? Um, moved up to Maine in, like, 2000... Uh, 
2003 or four or something like that. Um, I was living in Arizona, actually, before I moved to Maine. So I was born in Florida, lived there for a little while, eight years, seven, eight years. And I lived in Arizona for four years or so, four or five. And then uh, moved to Maine because my parents got a divorce. Um, and the funny, I always say it. My, I've told many people this. Uh, we, we actually were, my, I didn't know. Me and my brother didn't know my parents were getting divorced. My mom was like, we're going to go take a vacation up to Maine, Van Buren, Maine, um, from Arizona. <laughs> we're going to go take a vacation for a few months up there. And then like 21 days in, you realize, oh, we're actually going to be living here now. Not a, not a vacation. So it definitely was a surprise. It wasn't something like I was prepared for at the least. Yeah. Um, but it happened. So I went from Arizona, class of 28, like classroom filled with 28 kids to um actually graduating with 28 kids in, in high school so just yeah. very small we, you know definitely strange yeah yeah no definitely different uh different uh cultures and uh set up oh, yeah. all that stuff in between that area i mean but i just see what racism was like from first hand because i hadn't really dealt with it before so i didn't you know even back then i didn't think of it as racism in a sense but you know, just being looked at differently and kind of treated differently because there's, you know, very few colored individuals um, at the time. I think there was two, there was a brothers, Ruben and Gordon Hastings. And they were, I think, very mixed um, too. Um, so there were only two other kids I remember with dark complexion back then when we got there. So it was definitely interesting. Yeah, no, I, I got to say, uh, uh, here in uh, Wyndham, we had very, uh, very uh, good uh, variety of all different, I mean, skin colors and all that stuff. And we all just, you know, I, I, thankfully, I didn't grow up in a place that would ha had to deal with racism, I guess, is what I'm, right. getting, you know. Yeah, so. no, that, that is good. I know in other areas of Maine are, you know, seem to be, have, you know, like Fort Kent, I felt like had different. You know, because they had a lot of like uh, kids from uh, you know parts of the country, other parts of the country and state and stuff yeah. like that. I feel like they might have had you know more, but yeah, it was definitely interesting. But yeah. I, I mean, it's uh, I'm lucky for sure compared to what you know a lot of other people have had to deal with, to where you know it wasn't anything too too extreme mm. uh, for sure. But yeah, no, that's how I got to Maine. It's just like. And oh, you know, vacation, I, not <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's just kind of derooting and uh, starting all starting from scratch all over again. Uh, yeah, and, you know, that that's I gotta say, you've been uh, very uh, very good in what you've done um, up here because you've definitely caught in uh, caught my eye, you know, talent wise, you know, from day one. I appreciate that. Um, when I uh, went out to Monday of the Minds, that I asked for Tony, I was like, "Who's that guy?" <laughs> like he goes, "Oh, that, that, that's Nathan. That's you know, unique and known." I'm like, "Oh, he sounds good." <laughs> <You know? laughs> and just kind of that—that's kind of how that all generated from there, you know. And uh, I gotta say, so um, heard the first album, which is great. Um, and I heard that uh, you got the the second one. Is that already out now, or is that coming? No. It's funny you know, when you say first album is out and potentially I uh, just SoundCloud, potentially Bandcamp. Um, I have, I had. Uh, are you still there? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You you glitched okay. away for a minute. Yeah, I'm I'm good though. Um, I have a first album that I recorded back in the day, um, mixed again through GarageBand, um, and that has like eight or nine tracks maybe a little more some skits in there so that's technically my first album but it was mixed by me it wasn't mastered or anything like that i'm um, just called we are all unique and known so technically that's my first album i'd say but then yeah i have unique unknown um which would be my first ap what i consider it's five tracks um that's out on all streaming platforms and then i have a new You there? Nate, you there? Anyone ready to release? Oh. 
Uh, Nothing like some good internet issues. Right. Um, but yeah, I worked on, a, I have an album prepared and Lee Giles actually did the art for it. Um, he did an art piece for each song. There's five tracks. Um, and this one's called uh, The Number Five, um, mm-hmm. Ride or Die, The Number Five, essentially. Um, and that's like the, I feel like the number one, we're one of the singles off of it that uh, I'll probably release before. Um, which I wrote for my brother, which is just, you know, him and his woman were having a baby and they're having some complications. So I wrote a song for him, just like, you know, that love of your life, that person that's always got your back, that kind of deal. And then number five means, you know, uh, balance or something like that. Um, number five has a really good meaning. If you, if you look it up. Um, but yeah, that's going to be that. That so road to die, I, I, I love that song. When you perform that for the first time, I was like, oh, that that's that's a perfect flavor. It's a great song. Technically, this is a little... Uh, nobody is actually... Nobody knows this, but you can actually listen to the new album on Bandcamp. It's actually out on Bandcamp. I'll probably, probably bring it down and do an official release yeah. for, for anybody who <laughs> wants a sneak peek at the new stuff um it is there but yeah no that's that's coming up next and then kyler and i have a compilation album um this is pretty much his his baby um he got a group of people together um got i9 on it We've got uh you know sarah violet miles bullen got a lunar landing myself rigatoni's gonna be on it because uh, me and him did a couple tracks together um and then it's going to have some singles for me. True Romance is a new single. I just got mastered by DJ Matt Perry. Um, so, yeah, that compilation album is going to be coming out soon. So a lot of good music is going to be coming nice, from nice. Family Band Records, which is the record label um, thing that me and Kyler have. Definitely be looking forward to that. Yeah. It sounds like a hell of a roster on that. Yeah, crazy. You know, got you know, I nine just slays it. Me and him are gonna be doing a track uh soon too. Got the go ahead um under family band records too to do a track with I nine. So that's gonna be awesome. It's just a matter of time, um, for sure. But yeah, that's that. And then yeah, yeah, that's the new stuff. So I gotta say I'll bring that up too, because uh we actually uh promoted it on uh Hip hop on the drop, and that is uh, the old school crew that you did with Kyler. That video came out very, very nice. I got you know compliment you on that. Sorry, uh, I'm insane. Yeah, no. thanks, man. Yeah, you know, that was a again. Yeah, that was that was a great song. Uh, Ky- so I mixed that one. Um, DJ Matt Perry helped to master it, um, and uh, you know it was definitely integral to getting that sounding good. Um, and then, you know, Sarah Violet did the music video for it. So that's up on YouTube right now. But yeah, that was a classic song. Just me and Kyler have done music. We have countless just, you know, recordings of us jamming and stuff. Cause I've known him for, you know, like seven year, eight years. I don't know how time works, but a decent <laughs> amount of time. Um, and we started jamming in basement. Um, and then started doing the art walks at guitar grave. Um, and we started out as Dead Float Society. He came up with a name. Um, and uh, it built, you know, that ended up building into something a lot more than just me and him performing. Um, ended up putting shows together under Dead Float Society, mixing hip hop and alternative music. Um, but then, yeah, we had this song, The Beats by Anno Domini, um, based out of California, I believe. But uh, he also did the beat for Just Another Day and a couple mm-hmm. other tracks. But uh, One of my favorites, I might add. Yeah, that's a classic. But yeah, um, old school crew, just a classic, you know, it was a beat. And uh, I wanted to get Kyler on, um, on a, a beat instead of, you know, us jamming. And he, yep. you know, he really wanted to, you know, get back into the roots of the music and do something. So we ended up putting that together recorded it at his house i recorded my verse at my place and 
um, yeah, ended up being pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. I, I got to say the, uh, the style of it and everything it instantly brought me back to like late eighties, early nineties. It was just mm-hmm. like, I was just like, Oh man, this is perfect. Yeah. It was dope. The graffiti wall at aura or yeah. Or yeah. Or on the side of aura, we utilized that. Then our old yeah. space at the guitar grave. Um, and then my verse was done like on the monument square area. So yeah, he's a lot utilized a you know, some cornerstone cornerstones of Maine. <laughs> Uh, Portland. Well, yeah, because when I saw that in the video, I I said that I know that uh, I know that alley because that was what I used uh, for Yo That's Dirt as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm bad. Pretty pretty much. Yeah. If you're gonna do a music video on the streets of Portland, you're gonna probably use that graffiti wall. So definitely seeing it in countless. (laughs) Right, right, right. Everyone has a different way of using it, but it's cool because it was different. Because I I always generate ironically the more black and white i I don't know why i just i I like that tone that style of it always yeah that's fair um but uh so it you know it gives it always gives a different look more or less than what say yours did because yours was actually in color you know so it brought a different look to it so you wouldn't even know it's the same thing um wouldn't even know what (laughs) sounded like (laughs) (laughs) what song is that Oh shit! <laughs> now you... Who didn't even know? Uh, yeah. Oh god! Who knows who it is? Who is it? Da, na, 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 na. No, no, it... classic rock song. Yes, yeah. it is, and it's driving me crazy because my dad would be like, "Oh, come on, you know this." <laughs> Isn't that the greatest thing when you try to remember a song? And it... well, here we are trying to think about hip hop, and then they go and switch this, you know, flick the switch to rock, you know. And... Well, you know, I my favorite thing to listen to is actually metal. Like I listen to instrumental metal, uh, so I love you know guitar, yeah. shredding guitar, you know, like uh, John Petrucci or um, I believe that's how you say his name. Um, and, you know, instrumental bands like Intervals and Polyphia and um, stuff like that, and then you know, bands like Mastodon, Opeth, all that I really love. But uh, yeah, I don't even really. I the first hip hop I've listened to recently was actually, actually, that sounds like a weird. Actually, the last hip hop I listened to was uh, Aesop Rock's new album. Oh yeah, oh my god, it's so good. But, uh, but yeah, I love me some metal, some hard rock. Like classic rock was really what I listened to. Ozzy Osbourne, Rush, when I started listening to music. Crazy Train was the first song on my first MP3 player. It's the only one I could figure out how to get on there, and I listened to it for like a month. <laughs> I uh, I gotta say, I I did did grow up with that more '80s, you know, type of hair metal band stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Quiet Riot. Motley Crue, um, mm-hmm. you know, Guns N' Roses. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. My, my dad was very Metallica. That was like my number one band. That's always will be my number one band. Nothing against I can see that. Ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, before, you know, this journey here to all this hip hop that I get to talk with you, that's what I was doing, was doing rock, you know? And uh, yeah, yeah. We were yeah, 80- I still have that guitar, actually. I think either that's it. Oh, yeah. I, that I, might I, actually. Where, <laughs> where is that, actually? Hmm. <laughs> I know it was I back in the It's still at the Bumbling Wuha's place or it's at Kyler's. Uh, yeah, because I definitely actually, because uh, I need to reconnect with uh, that guitar and try to freaking incorporate that into some of my music now. Because yeah, I got thinking about it. I sat on that a little too long, and now I need to get back into it so I can incorporate it with my hip hop and make it happen. Because I know you should. I, That's a good idea for I sure. Can, I know I can blend my guitaring a little bit to it to make it happen. So bring something different to the table yeah you know that's the idea so speaking of something different uh what's next after all uh the second album and the uh family band records album that you're putting out what's happening after that um well you know i think i'm gonna retire you know it's been a long long time and you know my wife and kids (laughs) sarah's like wife and kids mother (laughs) um <laughs> to be honest uh awesome. just you know more creation the goal right now with covid and everything is to try to just collaborate with people 
you know, and try to create new stuff. Um, so I'm working with my buddy, Michael, um, Michael Brown, um, who's actually a phenomenal guitarist and singer. And uh, it's just beautiful music. We actually did a couple recordings the other day, more of that live studio sound. Um, so we'll be, I'll, I'll also be releasing that stuff under family band records soon. Um, but also want to, uh, we're looking to build something big for Maine. I want to put Maine on the map. You know, it's been, uh, it's been a goal for a while. Um, music for me is definitely not just about myself. I, when I was an actor, I definitely wanted to be a star, you know, whatever. But at this point with how life has gone and everything I've learned, I, I want to build up, you know, a team, a, a group of people, you know, people in general, we are all unique and known. So want to, you know, create a space that can be a, uh, you know, performance space can be a collaboration space, you know, for older people, younger people, um, you know, just pretty much, you know, work together with different artists across the, you know, um, across the state country, who knows, you know, I want to just build, build up what we've got here and give people a, a place, you know, seen a lot of wonderful things over the years here like Monday the Minds and um, you know Hidden Ladder Collective you know the art side of things and uh, just a good mixture of people who just love each other and love music love art and you know there's want to just create a space that you know we can actually put everything together I've been wanting to bring and my favorite thing to do is like get people together you know, that's what the mix of hip hop and alternative music was for. And, you know, you know, intermingling, you know, Monday of the Minds with that crew, you know, with the Hidden Ladder Collective, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all it's, it's just beautiful stuff. And everybody is does such a good job. You know, think of Zach Mullen, you know, what he's done with Monday of the Minds or, mm. you know, um, uh, Will Hessian, who does the Hidden Ladder Collective, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. When, well, no, I, I, I mean, I agree with you because, I mean, it's people like them that, you know, inspire me to kind of like go do what I want to do and help mm -hmm. also help them out uh, along the way for, you know, giving me that shot. Right. Um, you know, respectively, because uh, like, especially Zach and uh, Monday of the Minds, um, when I first went to rap night, it was, it was a little intimidating, you know, Monday of mm -hmm. Minds, Monday of the Minds wasn't so intimidating as far as the crowd or whatever. It was more, you know, self-intimidation of, you know, getting up there in front of everybody at, you know, yeah. at the end of it. But, but yeah, no, Zach and all them are very cool, very uh, supportive and all that. So uh, that's why mm -hmm. you know, I tell, I try to direct anyone that says, Hey, you know, if you want to try to perform, go sign up at, you know, Monday of the Mines, you know, that's what I was doing up until obviously COVID happened. Yeah, it's, it's good, to, you know, it's definitely a consistent thing, but yeah, we, you know, in a time like this, we want to, you know, just eventually bring something, something to the table that, you know, all these different parts of, you know, music and art, whether it be hip hop or, you know, some jazz, um, or art, whether it be, you know, even acting and theater, you know, or just, you know, paintbrush, that kind of stuff. You know, there's so much great stuff. I feel like we can just intermingle it. You know, I think that would be huge, huge. Um, and especially a time right now where we need to come together. Right. Um, with everything going on, for sure. No doubt. No doubt. Now, uh, aside from, uh, you know, doing the uh, hip hop and the acting, you, uh, you know, I, I know that we jammed out a couple of times. You do, you do a little bit of drumming too and all that. Um, do you do any keyboard or anything like that or? Oh yeah. No, the drums was my first instrument before pop, before acting and all that stuff. Drums was my, where I started musically. Um, and then a uh, keyboard was next. Keyboard, I just started le learning musical theory, but before it was all just improvised and, you know, stuff like that um but yeah the drums is my first passion when it comes to music so i love that mm. um for sure and that's that's pretty much it i don't know guitar or anything 
something like that. I know the spoons. The spoons is a pretty good instrument um, to play. The triangle is pretty, pretty fashionable. I also like the beatbox. That's cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I I gotta say, anyone who can play the spoons, that, that that's some talent right there. It is. You know, there's a fine intricacy that comes into playing the spoons. No, there is no doubt about that. Uh, I've seen. Uh, it was down in Vegas. There was a guy just doing it around the sidewalk, and it was just unbelievable what he was doing with that. Um, he was actually doing like Metallica rhythms and stuff like that. Too. Oh my goodness! Like, dude, it was insane. Uh, the spoons. He, he, the spoons. he definitely got a twenty out of me. <laughs> ah. I was impressed. Um, but yeah, so but, yeah. Um, no, so you're saying uh, collaborations and stuff like that, and uh, you said you did a couple tracks with uh, Rigatoni. I remember I heard a couple of them, like uh, "Let It Ride." I gotta say, that would that one's definitely one that uh, I can't wait to see the you know final copy. Oh yeah, "Let It Ride" is uh, is a classic um, for sure, and you know we have three tracks so far, or four, one kind of in the in the beginning stages. Um, but actually on YouTube, you can see, let me remind you performed live filmed by Sarah Violet, um, which is just one of my favorite live performances ever for sure. But that one's dope. Yeah. No, Rigatoni is one of my favorite MCs here in Maine. Um, and pretty much that, that I know of just because his, you know, flow is so insane. His freestyle what? as well. Let me add things. Um, he free oh freestyling too. That's the other thing. Like when we recorded these tracks, like "Let It Ride" and stuff like that. Um, you know, freestyling is just something we would do, you know, for fun too during the time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, rigatoni is fresh for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, collaborating with people is extremely important right now. So. I want to try to work with as many people as possible. I mean, we even got a track together, mm. um, which is dope. Which is freaking dope. Is that up? That's not up on. Uh... So that um, that is up on my YouTube channel at JT Dirty, I believe. Okay. And um, if it's not there, then it's definitely on Beyond the Mics. But I'm pretty sure it's at JT Dirty's on that one because that was before we got Beyond the Mic up and fully running and functional at that point in time. Um, but yeah, so uh, there's that. And uh, there's also um, the other one that we kind of had down the pipeline, so to speak, that kind of in the in the semi works. I got that beat for you guys mm -hmm. and uh, doing tone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely. Uh, no, no worries there. You definitely sound like you got a little bit on your plate right now to finish up and you know tie up and all that stuff. Yeah, the way you know the way I see it is you know everything happens when when it's ready. You know when it's right for sure. Like everything that's happened musically with me so far, it's not been at a point of like rushing things or pushing. You know, it's just kind of I'm a, definitely a live in the moment kind of guy for sure. But, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, those are, it's, you know, that, it's, you know, beautiful music for sure. It's especially beautiful to be collaborating. Well, it's, it's like, keep moving on that, that, that song had a, you know, original, like I told you original, the thought was, you know, that was supposed to be, you know, a, you know, a female singing the hook or whatever, or that was mm -hmm. the original design or whatnot. But when I heard and you were like, let me get Nathan. He's a, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's a beautiful voice now, <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, it was just one of those things that was like, it was more about commitment than necessarily who was supposed to do it. Right. I, I knew if I, if you said you were on board, you were going to commit to it and mm -hmm. make it happen and deliver. Yeah. And, um, so that was kind of the whole reason why I decided to go that route. And it ended up being something better than I originally anticipated. So it was just, you know, that's just kind of like you said, it's things just fall in place the way they're supposed to kind of happen. Beautiful. Um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I, you know, I've been doing comedy videos too through Punky's mixtape. Yes, uh, I love those. By the way, <laughs> yeah, he does the Wednesday, the Wednesday weekly show at eight. But um, yeah, that was kind of 
spawned out of, you know, he's like, Hey, can you do this for me? Would, would you be able to be interested in doing like, you know, a promo for the show, um, you know, quick and funny. And, you know, I was, it was a good, I've done 20, 21 episodes now or 21 promos. So um, just having this strong commitment to something and following through for so long, it gets just gratifying. So it's definitely, you know, better to, you know, commit to things and, you know, get them done. I just, I, I know be, as being an artist, there's certain stages you go through being a hip hop artist or a musician or whatever, where you feel like you're not doing enough or, you know, you feel kind of stuck or you start stuff and you don't finish and you feel shitty about it and, you know, kind of just drags <laughs> on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, once you commit to something and finalize it, it's beautiful. And that song came out great. I do love it. And yeah, uh, yeah it's fun. No, no, that no. I was. It was definitely fun, and it was definitely. Uh, it was cool to get something like that laid out because uh, it was honestly the kind of groundwork that set the next stages to come. Because I, I had worked with Rigatoni prior to that, but we never really laid anything solid, concrete mm-hmm. out that we promoted. Right. Um, it was only just live performances, and we laid out a couple of recordings, but nowhere near ready to let the public see. Yeah. So it was one of those things that like you were the first, you know, public, so to speak collaboration that really kind of set that groundwork that was like, all right, this guy, uh, he, he's willing to collab and they, you know, sound good doing something different. Let's see what he's got. And right. I mean, that's how I got that whole talking shit collab kind of go, going. You, you were the first one originally for, you know, the to do a collab with me. And then, so that was like, you were the one of the first invites on talking shit because I was right. like, oh, geez, all right, got to make sure he's in on this. <laughs> um, and that was Classic. cool. You know, I was able to hook you, uh, hook you in with uh, Jihadi and Rigatoni on that. Yeah. So you had, had your own sol- selection there. Magic in the making. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So with that being said, I think uh, we're going to probably, uh, end this at this rate because i think you uh pretty much nailed everything that i wanted to touch base upon but damn right we need to make sure we know exactly where to find all your music so why don't you go ahead and lay all that stuff out for us right now all right i'll be right back with a unique unknown commercial do you like cds (laughs) do you like pens yes we do and do you like stickers yes we do well good for you nobody cares what you like it's all about me hi (laughs) i have music on spotify all streaming services i don't know i just said spotify yeah i got music everywhere um you can find my first album unique unknown there i have cds hard copies so if you want a cd you can always hit me up i'll send one to you um and yeah, family band rec. Actually, if you just search We Are All Unique Unknown on Linktree, you can pretty much find everything I have available. Stuff with DJ Matt Perry for DJ vs. Rapper, um, which, you know, we've done so much of that. And he's just an amazing collaborator. He's been one of my favorite people to work with, mm. um, including Punky and stuff over this COVID season, as we call it. Um, but yeah find everything under there you know i've got stuff under punky's mixtape you know the comedy videos i do and then the stream of conscious or the um sounds of conscious that me and dj matt perry do for the show um and then yeah that's you know pretty much it catch uh old school crew on youtube search family band records or unique unknown on youtube you can find all that there and we'll try to share a lot of that out also up on Beyond the Mic page for you and get that out as well, too. Yeah, yeah. Dude, okay. I appreciate it. Okay. I appreciate it, and I appreciate the interview, and I appreciate what you guys are doing for sure. You know, and you know, it's good to just support, support people. Hmm. And I like that you guys are doing that. So keep it up. Keep up the good work. So is that what you're saying? You're going to give a shout out to Beyond the Mic then? No, I'm not going to specifically give a shout out to you guys. I'm going to beat around the bush. 
right. Okay. Well, fuck you then. I know what you want here, <laughs> you mother. This is about me. It's I'm just always, no, it is. It is. No, uh, yeah. No, shout out to be on the mic and you know, check out check out talking shit on YouTube. Mm. Thirty one chapters or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's like thirty one chapters. Uh, thir- it's, it's thirty two verses, but it's technically only like thirty one MCs because I I have two verses in it. That's fucking dope. Yeah, no, it's great. And uh, also, you gotta say say hello to Grayson and Malcolm. They are also very popular on different videos I do. Oh, Sarah's wow. babies. Oh yeah. What's up, Malcolm? Say hi, Grayson. His face is like pushed into the couch <laughs> right now. He's 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 had he's had a long week. He's he's done with it. <laughs> Mine are out on the couch doing the same thing. <laughs> same thing. Either that or they're watching chipmunks out the sliding door, which is <laughs> even funnier because they just they're ready to pounce, but they know they can't go anywhere. So it's <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> you're getting all hyped up for nothing. <laughs> I think Malcolm gets all his energy out on Grayson. That's why like, Malcolm can't get the birds outside, so he uses uh, Grayson as like a uh, as his prey essentially for his practice. <laughs> yeah. Word. Well, Nate. Hey, I appreciate it, man. This was awesome. Yeah, brother, I appreciate you. And uh, I'll definitely be giving Kyle a shout out here and uh, getting to him soon and uh, getting him up on here and getting to know him a little bit better too because, I mean, I met him a couple of times, but, I mean, this will be a perfect uh, way for me to get to know the whole story about Kyler and see where he came from. Oh, my God. I was like, what does that sound? Grayson is snoring over here. I was like, what is that? Um, Yeah, no, I think Kyler definitely deserves a solo interview too. Um, We'll definitely – would want to get up there with him um or he can do a do a one but yeah he's he's got a full album out or he's got a full album under his band uh, solar power which is just amazing he's a phenomenal artist and you know um you know great connector of people and stuff like that too so yeah it'd be cool to hear hear his voice without my obnoxious voice in the background <laughs> cut it out you're so critical but we all know you're joking at the same time oh am i you don't know shit okay yes you do <laughs> all right <laughs> excuse me you better watch it <laughs> nothing i'm grayson's up all right brother yeah thank you i appreciate you um definitely and uh, I really appreciate this once again. And uh, like I said, we'll le- definitely link up sooner than later. Cool, cool. All right, man. Peace out. Be on the mic. All righty. Later. You're amazing. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs>